Hey everyone, I'm Quasi. I'm a Twitch and YouTube partner, and this is a tour of my new streaming setup. All the components will be listed and recapped in the description below, so you do not have to take any notes. Let's get right into it. So this is basically the view when you step into the new streaming and recording studio. I'll start off by talking about the actual setup, the streaming setup, which is basically this is centerpiece. And this is, you know, in its full glory, this is how it looks. And a lot of time is spent into making sure that it looks neat and tidy. Uh, so let's talk about the visual uh, representation and, and where do I actually stream and what are the monitors I use. So this monitor setup, I've I was very particular about my monitor setup because I've always used like vertical monitors in my previous setup and I wanted to replicate the same. A bit of it is also the space in the room. I needed space where, you know, the monitors can actually stack up vertically because I don't have a huge desk. This is a 60 inch desk. By the way, this desk is from OmniDesk. They are a local manufacturer of um, solid wooden desk. And let's talk about the desk real quick before I talk about the monitors. You know, the desk here, this is actually solid wood. This is not uh, your regular manufactured wood or anything is solid wood. It can take up to 100 kilograms of weight. And unlike your IKEA, you know, Kalbi countertops that's pretty popular amongst uh, content creators, this thing is solid wood. And it's basically reinforced, and I'll show you the, under, the, the underside of the desk, is reinforced by a steel bar running across the desk. And that's why it can take, um, you know, a lot of weight and a lot of punishment and, you know, that's why I can I can mount so many things in the middle of the desk without fear that it will sag in the long run in the middle, which is something that I've seen a lot of um, IKEA Kalbi countertops actually do over the time uh, that you use it. So anyway, this is the setup. Let's talk a bit about the monitors here. So the monitors here, the one on the bottom, that's my gaming monitor. It's a ViewSonic Elite 270G is what I use to game. And it has G-Sync capabilities because I use a NVIDIA graphics card. And the top monitor here is basically a Dell 4K 27 inch monitor. This is really more for generic purposes. I use it for browsing. I use it to put in my OBS and make sure that, you know, my production and my stream is stable and frame rates are stable. And this is where I monitor chat. It's a vertical monitor. This is a LG 29 inch widescreen. And it's where I put in a vertical orientation chat. And you guys know how I am very, very uh, obsessed about reading every single line of chat. So. This vertical orientation really helps me. Um, I've always thought about how do I maximize the space on my desk? And I thought this was probably like one of the most ideal scenarios, a vertical monitor setup, but because I only have very li limited, you know, width to the side, I had to run a vertical monitor setup. And basically, um, you know, the 29 inch LG basically lines up pretty well in terms of, you know, the height when I tilt it in a vertical orientation in terms of the height versus the two uh, main monitors here. So I'm very, very pleased with the monitor setup and in my, in my mind, like it gives me all the space I need to be productive. Um, so let's talk a bit about lighting next. So lighting is something that I've realized over my short one year as a content creator is super important. When I first started out streaming, you guys will notice that my face is always pretty much overexposed, uh, very, very, very poorly lit, I think. And that's why like, you know, lighting is so important in this new setup. Um, in this centerpiece here, this is really more for decorative purposes. These are nano leaves. Um, can't recommend them, you know, highly enough. They look amazing. You can change the colors of every single panel from your phone. It's really easy to use, really easy to set up. Uh, great product. I'm not endorsed by any products in this, in this video, by the way. So you can take my word for it. I really enjoy setting it up. I had a great fun um, just, you know, exploring the colors and whatnot. Now, in terms of lighting, you can see these two. Uh, Elgato key lights and honestly it has made such a big difference in my streams they are currently set up to have different um, intensity and basic color in terms, in terms of coloration this is slightly more yellowish this is more like white and balanced and this is a lot more intense and I don't know whether you can see from the camera but this is a lot more intense and the idea is that these two light source they are of different intensities to give my face a bit more depth and a bit more shadow um, when, when the camera actually captures my face. Because if they are set to the same intensity, your face will look equally lit from left and right. And that might appear, you know, to give you like a washed out, very overexposed um, 
kind of look. So that's not what I was going for. And speaking about lighting, the next thing to talk about is a camera. So this is a, I'll show you this camera here. This camera is basically a Sony A6400 DSLR. I've used to use webcams to stream and to capture my face and whatnot, but I've come to realize that there's nothing that really matches the performance specs of a DSLR. This is an A6400 Sony and all the product links and descriptions are by, I by the way, and you know, you can find them in the description below. Uh, I'll give you links to them if you want to replicate the setup. But essentially when you run a DSLR, the most important thing about um, being a, a streamer is that you need to have a dummy battery because DSLR basically they run on traditional batteries, right? So this, as you can see, is a dummy battery. Uh, what it does is basically, uh, actually no, it's on the wrong side, it's on the other side. So this is basically where you keep the battery, right? And this is actually a dummy battery, meaning it's powered by an AC source uh, plugged into the wall. And this is basically a cable that basically uh, transports the footage to my Elgato capture card. Uh, that's what is basically being used by OBS as my webcam input. And the lens here, I can't remember the exact lens, but I'll put the, the description um, you know, of the lens in the, the, the description of this video so you guys can replicate the same lens setup. And basically that's how I'm capturing uh, the visual image quality um, you know, that, that you guys see on stream. So you can see all these are basically mounted to the desk via C-shaped clamps. These, these poles here, these, this one, two, three, four, that's actually for the widescreen. And actually the, the fifth and the sixth, these are all C-shaped clamps. They basically, I don't need to do any form of drilling. They're all clamps that you attach to the desk. I'll show you real quick here. Based, and this is, I'll talk about the wire management later, but you can see these are all uh, C-shaped clamps. They're clamped to the desk. And you know, they need to support the right amount of weight. And uh, again, I think it's way cleaner when you clamp them to the desk. It reduces the amount of space it takes up. A lot of times you have monitor stands, default monitor stands by the manufacturers, they are very, um, heavy, they take a lot of space on the desk. The whole idea is I want to keep my desk really clean and you know, the C-shaped clamp really helps. And a bit of the, the beauty of like C-shaped clamps is also wire management. You can see as I, as I bring the phone over here, um, you can see that all these cable management, they can be bound to the poles here. Of course, I can do a definitely, I can do a way better job in terms of tying the cables and whatnot. That's something that I definitely could do better, but hey, uh, it works for me now, but you look from the front, it's still relatively neat, right? Um, so that's basically my monitor setup, my, my lighting setup. Let's talk a bit about the audio setup. And this is another really important part about the stream because the stream to me is something that a lot of people actually leave on the background. So it's important that the audio that you capture from the entire stream is clean and crips. And this is where your peripherals and your setup actually comes into play. This is really important. And not only is it important for streaming, it's important for YouTube. When I do voiceovers, when I do commentaries, it's really important that I have the proper audio gear to make it sound good. So the centerpiece obviously is um, this Shure SM7B, right? It's a, that's mounted on a boom arm. This is a Rode PSA1 mic mount, and it can take a lot of punishment. Honestly, it's one of the best arms I've ever used, it can take a lot of punishment because this microphone that I'm using is a SM7B, it's a Shure SM7B. It is a very heavy microphone, but this Rode PSA1 is able to support this mic and it can basically, you know, be used in any form of orientation. This arm, I couldn't recommend it enough. It's a bit pricey, but it's pretty amazing for uh, you know, holding up the microphone, ensuring that you don't drop an expensive piece piece of equipment that you spend so much money on. So this microphone, like honestly, the Shure SM7B couldn't speak highly enough about it. It's able to record my voice in um, a very clean and very concise fashion. Um, it's, it's been great using it. I've been using a Blue Yeti previously when I first started, but the upgrade is honestly, it's you know, heaven and earth when it comes to the recording quality. So uh, really happy with this SM7B. This SM7B is hooked up to this audio interface here. It's a Go XLR. So if I would say there's any one piece of equipment that I couldn't do with in the entire setup, in my streaming and recording setup, 
it is the Go XLR. Now, again, I'm not endorsed by any of these products. I'm not endorsed by any of these brands. So you can take it from me when I mean that this is an important piece of equipment. This is an important piece of equipment, honestly, because this allows me to control the audio volumes of um, the stream and, the, and basically whatever I'm recording. And you can see that a bit of the beauty here is that you are able to split the audio inputs coming in through uh, your microphone, is basically what is being recorded by the show SM7B, your music, which means that I can toggle the music up and down on the stream, and voice chat, which is basically when I'm in Discord with my party members, we're doing keys, metal keystones and whatnot, I could raise their volume up and down. And basically this is a system which is, allows me to control the game sounds. There's very there's other audio mixes out there that can do the same, but the Go XLR is basically, it really simplifies everything that even if you don't know much about uh, audio mixers and whatnot, it's so easy to install, so easy to use, it's plug and play, it's USB driven, you can see the USB port here. Um, so this XLR cable here, um, it's connected to my show SM7B. And the reason why the Go XLR is you know, situated off to the right here by itself, it's, it's done deliberately because my right hand when I'm playing and I'm using my mouse, if I need to mute myself real quick, I can, I can swing over and mute myself. And that's basically me muted. For example, if a phone call comes in or like, you know, something important comes in, I can mute and just simply, uh, you guys won't hear a thing. So that's something that uh, is done deliberately. Now the wire and the cable management for the Go XLR can be a lot better. It's not ideal right now, but it's done for a good reason. You can see that the XLR cable, the USB, the power cables, um, they're all separately, uh, you know, in terms of wire management, I, I wired them separately. This is to ensure there's no like interferences. When I first started using the Go XLR, I noticed a lot of interference in the sense whenever I, uh, you know, if I tie the wires up, the Go, let's say the XLR cable, if I tie it up with the rest of the cables here, I realized there's some very slight hissing noises and it's really just from electromagnetic interferences. So the signal to be clean, in my opinion, you either need a really good shielded XLR cable or you can do what I'm doing, which is basically run the cable separately and independently all the way to the microphone on the other end of the desk. Um, so that way the sound is really, really clean. Um, the last thing about my audio setup, the Go XLR, the audio output is basically connected to this pair of headphones. You can see that it's connected by a 3.5 mm jack. This is a DT1990 Pro. Uh, I used to have a HD800, but you know, when it died, I replaced it with the DT1990 Pro. And I would say this thing has been very sturdy. It's really comfortable. Um, you guys know I stream for five to six hours in a row and you know, comfort is really important. And this microphone really, sorry, this headset really gives me uh, the leeway to be you know, comfortable in my own skin um, and whatnot. So couldn't speak highly enough of this, this uh, headset. It's very clinical, it sounds very scientific, and yeah, I couldn't speak highly enough about it. It's great. So that's basically, I think, most of the visual setups and audio setup and the lighting. Talk a bit about peripherals here. Um, wireless Logitech mouse, uh, nothing too special. I play World of Warcraft, so there's a bit of side buttons here that can be bound. This is what I use. Um, for a wireless performance, this is actually really good. Uh, I think it's a G702, if I'm not wrong, a wireless G702, Logitech. And the keyboard here, this is a Vamilo VA87M. Since I use Vamilo keyboards, I've never gone back to use any other keyboards. And the best part about these keyboards is that it has a, I think it's a Cherry MX silent switch. So you can see they are relatively soft. Like when I spam. And this is why on stream, you guys don't hear my, my clicks on my keyboard. It's because these are basically silent um, switches. Right, um, I know some of you like like really loud switches, but these are you know Cherry MX silent switches. It's really great, um, and and you know big props to Vamilo for making great keyboards. You know these are basically custom keycaps and whatnot. Um, I really like I really enjoy their keyboards. I have I have two other <laughs> Vamilo keyboards at home uh, of different designs. Obviously they are not silent switches, but the streaming ones that I use these are silent switches, um, and it, and it works great. Really enjoy you know their peripherals. Um, another peripheral on the, on the desk, this is another Elgato product. This is basically the Stream Deck. It allows me to do a couple of things. Super handy. Um, for example, I could toggle on my Discord mute on and off just with the click of a button here. 
So whenever I'm, let's say, raiding and I need to talk to the party and I don't want to talk to chat anymore, I can just mute. Or rather, if I want to talk to chat and I don't want to talk to guild members, I can just mute. I can just mute myself here and the microphone won't transmit what I'm saying to Discord so I can talk to chat. So that's the beauty of uh, this thing, like a lot of one-stop options you can use. For example, um, just a click of a button, I can go live. I can record any footage in OBS. Uh, I can click on this button here, there's Twitter and Discord, and you'll send an announcement to people that I'm live. Um, I can clip, I can even clip stuff that I'm, you know, let's say I'm doing a, a very amazing moment on the stream right now, I can click on this clip, and it will basically automatically clip on the back end on Twitch the past 15 seconds. Um, and these are basically, you know, scenes that I can switch on OBS from my starting screen to my ending screen and whatnot. Um, really, really amazing product, really enjoy using it. Um, Another function that, sorry, I forgot to mention, this is really important. So if you have a frequently asked question on stream, I just press this FAQ button and it sends people like a link that I want them to read, which is my FAQ page. So um, the stream that honestly, it's great, great for productivity. So that really is everything on the desk, um, everything you need to understand about the streaming setup. Um, so let me take you through a bit about what's powering this whole thing. So this is basically the rig that I'm using. This is basically, um, it's built by a local PC manufacturer called Aftershock. And um, nothing too much to see here. Honestly, this is a Lian Li um, O11D chassis. Uh, chassis. Uh, it's powered by a 3080 uh, GTX over here. It's a Ryzen CPU. Nothing much to mention here. It's just really honestly like um, what's really powering all the rendering and the recording. I really need a beast of a setup because you guys know I do daily YouTube videos. I need something that renders really fast. And the Ryzen chips from AMD, like uh, since I switched from Intel to AMD, never really looked back. The performance is great. Really enjoy this rig. Um, it's, it's doing some heavy lifting for me right now, actually. And, you know, couldn't speak highly enough about the build quality and whatnot. Again, not sponsored by them. Um, in terms of cable management, you can see that a lot of people say, uh, out of sight, out of mind. This is true for cable management. Um, something I'll give props to, um, you know, the desk is, you know, you guys see, I mentioned earlier that this reinforced steel running through, or rather reinforced metal running through the middle of the desk. This ensures that it doesn't sag over time and you can take punishment and wait. Um, there's, a, there's a mounted um, cable management system here. See this bar here? It's a mounted cable management system. And this is what I use to stuff all my cables here, right? I'm stuffing all my cables here. So when you look at it from top down, you don't see the cables. A lot of cable ties being used and the power bricks are basically mounted to the desk. As you guys can see, it's mounted to the desk over here. Um, so that way it allows you to manage cables like really, really easily. And um, you know, cable ties being needed here to make sure that everything is neat and tidy. Um, so that's basically the underside of the desk. And this is actually a standing desk. Um, but, you know, I've not really used it, but basically, uh, you know, you can move it up and down. I'll just show you real quick here. Oh wait, I didn't plug in the power, but yeah, I don't use the standing desk function, uh, but you can use it as a standing desk. Again, the build quality on this thing is great. Like the texture of the wood, the solid wood and whatnot, it's really great. Um, so that's that. This and the entire setup. Let me talk a bit about, um, you know, the, 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 the AV stuff that I use uh, when I'm not streaming. So this is a bit unsightly. Let me just close this thing. All right. So basically, this is basically where I watch television, sports and whatnot. Big football fan, by the way. Big Manchester United fan. Anyway, um, this is a 65 inch LG. This basically is where I'm, I have some MDI action going on uh, right now. And it's a 65 inch uh, LG C7 OLED TV. Um, and it's powered by, in terms of audio, these are Dali Rubicon speakers. And these are, these are basically connected to a HTPC, uh, a home theater PC um, over here, although I'll be upgrading to the Apple TV soon. And it's being hooked up um, by a Roxxon K3 deck and a Roxxon K3 amplifier that's powering the Dali Rubicons. And there's a PlayStation here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Well, there's a Yamaha, hi-fi system here. Um, this is Yamaha and there's a PS4 here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is what it is. I seldom play console now. Most of my time spent on PC games, uh, but that's basically the setup. Um, I'll show you the lighting in a bit. 
um, you know, one of the features I like is basically these downlights. These downlights do add depth to the room. Uh, this is mood lighting, basically. So the downlights basically, uh, they bring out the, the texture of these wooden panels. These are actually wooden panels with depth to it, right? So you can actually see like, it's not just a 2D, um, you know, feature, but they do have depth from the shadows, you can tell. Um, so at night, it looks really, really great with the mood lighting. Um, and this is where I lounge. This is where I cry to sleep when um, I fail Mythic Plus Keystones and whatnot, just kidding. But this is basically a lounging area and sometimes I use it to take a break from streaming. Um, I need it for inspiration and whatnot, I come here and lounge. Um, Secret Lab Chair. Um, you guys know Secret Lab Chairs. Um, really great. <laughs> this is a soft weave one. I really like Secret Lab Chairs. Um, use them for quite a while now. Um, again, not sponsored. <laughs> so these are display posters and you guys can see from this angle that um, it's really meant to kind of like add a bit of decor to the empty space there. These are disc plates. Um, this is my first time using disc plates and it's been a great experience. It's very easy to install. It doesn't require any form of drilling. So it's just literally a magnet that you stick on the wall and you basically mount the metal plates um, onto the wall. Super simple. So yeah, that's basically the entire setup. Um, I'll just quickly talk about, you know, uh, the balcony and whatnot. So another feature of this entire room is you know, when you enter, you get to see the balcony. So it's really hot right now. So I, I, I probably uh, wouldn't go out and, and show you. Maybe I'll just show you guys a quick peek, but this is the balcony, right? And this is where I host my friends. If they come over, um, I'll take you guys outside. Sorry about the sound. Uh, I'll just show you guys real quick. It's a, a place where I relax and come to blow off some steam. If I need inspiration, this is where I spend time. Uh, you know, just contemplating, having a cup of tea. And those are blinds. I can roll down the blinds um, if I want to. If I need some privacy, I could definitely roll down the blinds. But yeah, that's basically my neighborhood. Um, it's pretty cozy and whatnot. So yeah, that's basically it. This is the entire setup. This honestly has been a great place of zen and peace and quiet for me. That place is where I used to stream. And it was, you can tell from, from the space here, it's like super confined. So having a new space here with a lot uh, more room for me to move around, a lot more equipment, dedicated equipment, proper lighting. I had very poor lighting back then. Uh, that's why you guys uh, always felt that, you know, my face was kind of washed out. But with this setup, I, I couldn't, um, you know, express how much more um, at ease I am about, you know, the streaming quality and whatnot. Really been enjoying myself here. And that, my friends, sums up the entire room tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. All the products I mentioned is in the description below if you'd like to replicate my setup. Or if you have any questions at all, post them in the comment section. I will definitely get back to you. And last but not least, a big thank you to everyone who has supported me on this journey. Everything you see in this video is only possible because of you. And I'll continue to invest in myself to bring you the best content going forward. Take good care and I'll see you real soon.